I want to give you a demonstration of the one minute life repair system that's so integral to the Phoenix process. And those of you who are listening, of course, can follow along with me. And the young woman who has volunteered so kindly to come along and let me work with her on it. So, hi, thanks for coming. And let's start. First, we know that we are looking at some current situation that is giving you some difficulty, troubling you or challenging you, or you're trying to deal with, cope with, understand, whatever. And what is it that's concerning you at this point? I've always been a fearful person. Oh, so this is kind of a belief that has taken its form early in life and has carried its way through to now. Correct. Because these emotions, like fear and anxiety, are also beliefs. So tell me, what is the belief that's connected with this fear? That I won't be able to succeed at whatever I want to do. So you notice that the framing of the belief, as you probably have experienced it just now doing it along with us, has been in the future tense. I won't be able to whatever it is. So the content is connected to some future recognition or sense or idea that's fixed. And of course, it's based on the notion that this is the way it was in the past, that was my experience, and this is going to be the way it's going to be in the future. So what I experience will follow through from the past to the future. So I'm enslaved to it because when I'm counting the future based on the past, I'm a slave. There are no options, no options. We're creating options by changing the beliefs. We're shifting the options from a fixed idea to something that's open and possible for us. All right. Now, when you say that I won't be able to... To succeed at whatever I want to accomplish. Okay. What is the image that comes to you when you say that? I see myself as very small and the challenge before me very, very big. And how do you feel when you're this small and the challenge is so huge? I feel like a little girl. And you feel small? I feel small, overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. And what is the sensation, the physical counterpart of this? Uh, I have a tightness in my throat, and around my heart center, I feel very, very tight. All right. So let's do now the muscle testing that's part of this, which shows us the relationship between what's going inside, inwardly, and what's happening outside, the relation of the inner to the outer. So we see the, if you will, the mind-body connection or the mental-physical connection and how it's working. So let's see how this connection is being formed between inner and outer, which is demonstrated by what happens to the musculature, which is an expression or an experience of something going on in the inner form of consciousness. And eventually it become to be used as an intention, as we'll explain just a little bit. So now you can put your arm out to the side and make it level with your shoulder. And at the same time, you make a fist and keep your eyes open. And I'm going to just tap lightly. I'm going to push lightly on the outer part of your fist. And now say it, see it, feel it, sense it while I push down. So say the belief, the false belief. My fear is that I won't be able to accomplish what I need to accomplish, what's in front of me. See it, that's the small girl. Feel it, overwhelm, sense it, constrict it in the throat, say it, see it, feel it, sense it. I push down and your arm becomes weak. Now, you couldn't possibly say that to me unless you understood its opposite because you can't use the language without implying or tacitly bringing the opposite to bear. That's the way language is constructed. So it's impossible to say the one without knowing the other. So what's the other? What's the opposite of what you just said? That I'm perfectly capable of handling any situation that arises. So you see that you put it in the present tense. I am aware, perfectly capable. You didn't say I will be perfectly capable because that, again, is making up a future-oriented statement, even though it seems nice and positive. We keep it in the present tense. That's where the strength is in the present tense, and in our relationship to the eternal and the vertical reality, the invisible world, which operates only in the present for us, that is to come and help us. All right. So now when you say that belief, what's the image? 
I am perfectly capable of accomplishing, however you phrase it. What is your image that comes? And remember that her image is not the same as your image as you're doing this along. It's not the same belief that you just constructed either. So everyone is different according to his or her own tendencies. I see myself as strong, standing up straight, square shoulders. My posture is totally erect, and I feel strong. And you have the feeling of strength. And what's the sensation, the physical sensation that you may be experiencing? I can feel that my vertebrae are stacked right on top of each other and are extended, and my muscles are supporting my back fully, and I'm not hunched over. Very nice. So now, again, as we do with this muscle testing, put your arm out to the side, right, parallel to the floor and perpendicular to your body. Make your fist. Keep your eyes open. Keep your arm strong. Say, see, feel, and sense this new belief and the accompanying images, feelings, and sensation. And please do. I am confident. Ah, so you've just concisely condensed what you said before, I am perfectly capable, and you've caught it into the form of I am confident, and see it, so you see the image that you've described to us, feel it, and sense it, say it, see it, feel it, sense it, and go ahead, you can do that again, I am confident, I am confident, see it, feel it, sense it, same time, and now I push down on your fist, and your arm gets quite strong. And you see that it even gets so strong that it jumps up, so to speak. Okay. Now, for those of you who don't have somebody available to push down, because this is the only time you're ever going to need to have someone there to do it for you, because from this point on, you'll be doing it yourself. And every time you say the new belief and you see it, feel it, sense it, you're going to jut your arm out to the side and with your tight fist and strong so that it acts not only as the reminder of your mental-physical connection or the inner-outer connection, it also is an expression of your intention. It's like an arrow that's aimed and pushed and shot in a certain direction. So this is your intention. And so it serves two purposes. The possibility that exists if you don't have somebody available is to make an O-ring between your thumb and your middle finger of one hand, keep it strong, make it tight, and then you take your thumb and middle finger of your other hand and loop it inside the O-ring that you just made to make another O-ring that is sort of perpendicular to it. And then when you're starting this process, say the habitual belief, the one is the stressing, and then pull the inner ring through the outer ring. And you'll see that the outer ring just opens very easily, even though you're trying to resist having the inner ring pull through. Then, when you say your new belief and the new image comes, the new feeling and sensation, pull again. Do the same thing and pull to see if you can part the O-ring. And you find that even though as hard as you try, you can't do it. And that shows the strength. So this is the muscle testing part. And only does the first belief have to be stated that one occasion at the beginning. From then on, it's never addressed again. And you're only addressing 